Good day, my friends, and welcome to a video on Silmarillion Total War. This is a mod that isn't campaign playable yet. They're focused a lot on multiplayer at this moment, but they are beginning to focus a lot more on the campaign now. So we have something to look forward to. And what I'm thinking with this video, I'm just going to go through the factions, uh, do a simple video. Just show you the units of this mod. A link to the mod is in the description down below, by the way. You can download it and play it with your friends on multiplayer. Uh, but this video series is just me showing you the factions and the units of the factions at this moment. So here we go. We're going to begin with the most evil faction of all. The realm of Angband. The great faction of Morgoth himself. I'm going to show you the different units that you can get as this faction. And hopefully when the campaign releases it's going to be a funny ca campaign to play with Morgoth himself as your leader. I am so excited for this mod. I, this is the most exciting thing. I would love to play a faction in the first age uh, in Beleriand. I mean, there's so many possibilities to have a insanely amazing campaign experience in the first age. There's a lot of teams that have tried it before to, tr to create a campaign in the first age, but they have all failed. But where they have failed, I do believe that this is the team that's going to make it happen, and I really hope they are. So. The first faction we're going to look at in this little video series that I'm doing is the Realm of Angband, the most evil faction in the entirety of the First Age. Let's take a look at the different units that you can expect to recruit from this faction. Let's begin with the weakest units that you can recruit. Let's begin with these guys, Wretches of Angband. A large unit, ignore the this one, it's going to come later. Uh, Wretches of Angband, attack of one really pathetic um, 13 defense they are spears so they should be able to hold the line for you pretty well um, armor 3 defense skill 6 shield 4 uh, yeah nothing good but they can meet shield for you uh, bonus fighting cavalry combat bonus in snow and uh, in deserts good morale as well very long spears i mean meat shields that's basically what they are it doesn't say here that you can do shield wall with them so they are not going to be that useful. If they could shield wall, they would be so much better. Uh, they're meant to die. To hold the line and die. That's their purpose, basically. Uh, so try and use them accordingly. And we have the Thralls of Angband. These are archers. An early tier, I mean, 7 defense, 3 missile attack, 2 melee attack. They can use sharpened stakes, which is really effective. Uh, especially against the more heavily armored... Elven factions um, with their high armored cab. This is actually good. The fact that they can use sharpened stakes as. Remember, guys, this might all change. When they release the campaign map, this might be too overpowered to have these guys being able to use the sharpened stakes, the first tier archer. Um, all of these things might change. But three missile attacks, seven defense, and two melee attack. They look like this. Uh, pretty cool design. Let's take a look at this one as well. These, they, they both look good, uh, these units. They uh, look um, pretty strong. Uh, they look stronger than their stats are telling. But these are your weakest units as Angbon. Uh, let's go to the next uh, tier, uh, the Iron Shod tier. They have a lot of the same things. Let's begin with these guys. They look cool as well. Uh, nice helmet there, nice halberds. Pretty armored. Uh, I like the designs of these units. Let's take a look at the halberdiers. 7 attack, 7 charge, 9 defense, um, 7 in armor. So they can actually take a bit of beating uh, from archers. But try and avoid getting shot by archers with these ones because they're going to fall like flies. Um, can form spear wall, bonus fighting cavalry. These are your cavalry killers. Effective against armor. These guys can punch through heavy elven armor. Use them accordingly. They look really cool. They can be useful. They're not that great though. Um, they're okay. Okay, they have a large group though. 203 units, that's a lot. So, pretty solid units. And they look pretty cool as well. Let's go to the next. Iron Shot Legionnaires. These are your sword and board units. And they are really defensive. 5 attack, 
total defense of 17. So we're getting up there. These guys can hold the line a long time. I'm not sure about shield walling though. Uh, we can take a look at that later when we start the battle. Uh, fire attack 17 defense. I mean, they're okay. They look really good as well. They look about the same as these units. Solid unit across the board. Iron Shot Ravagers. I guess that these are your armor piercing flankers. Yes, indeed. 17 charge. That's really good. If you can get these guys to charge the enemy in the back, they're going to do so much damage. 13 attack, 10 defense, effective against armor as well. Excellent morale, powerful charge. I mean, these guys, they are going to die so incredibly quickly, but they are going to be able to do so much damage as well with that charge. So try and get the charge off with them, and they should perform quite well. Nice axes. Iron Shod Arbalists. 5 attack, 12 defense, 8 missile attack, effective against armor. These are your crossbows. They are going to be useful as well. 8 missile attack, with it being armor piercing, they are likely better what, than what you might think. Um, if you can get them into a good position, you should be able to utterly smash heavily armored opponents as long as these guys are away from danger and can fire they can do so much damage they can do damage time times five from what they're worth from the recruitment cost so yeah deadly units uh, coming in this early definitely and they look cool and we have these guys they look really badass have to admit, nice helmets, nice design here on the armor and helmets. Reavers of Unfauglith. Let's take a look. Oh, don't didn't mean to make you move. Uh, nine attack, six charge, seventeen defense. They come in about at this tier. I'm not sure if they are meant to be a tier higher than the Iron Shore, but they have the same basic stats at the as these units. Uh, about the same stats, they have a shield, they have an, an axe, they're not effective against armor, they're about the same as the Iron Sword Legionnaires, a bit better, better charge, better attack, but uh, yeah, about the same, uh, they fill up that role uh, about the same, they're a bit more expensive than the Re Legionnaires as well, so yeah, not sure if you want to use these guys, they're a bit better I think than the Legionnaires. With their attack, of course, nine extra attack. That that's good. The attack is far better, so they're better than the legionnaires. They're gonna do more damage, but they come about in the same tier, maybe a little bit higher, but yeah, about the same tier. They're good. They look good as well. Cool units. And then we come up to I don't know the semi semi elite tier. Uh, here we have some walks. I do believe that they're in this tier. They look really cool. It looks like it's humans riding on giant wolves they look really cool they look, look really look at the eyes look at the eyes here let's take a look at them seven attack two in charge uh, charge is really pathetic scare horses i think that these what i think the mod has done here i think they have taken away the charge entirely of melee cab so that they are completely useless as chargers and good in melee these are your cavalry killers. They're supposed to attack enemy cavalry and stay in combat with enemy cavalry. That's the role, I think. Anti-cavalry units here. That's what these guys are. Um, they scare horses and they're probably going to be... They're, they're okay. 7 attack, 22 defense. They should be able to hold a while in combat and they look mighty fine as well. The design is insane. It's so cool. Really good design here. Uh, let's move on to the next. Uh, let's take a look at them. Tormentors of the Iron Crown. 163 Orc Battalion. They look far more elite than the previous ones. They have skulls here. Let's take a look at their stats as well. Yeah, we're beginning to move up in terms of stats. 9 attack, 24 defense. Effective against armor as well. These guys are really powerful. With their armor piercing. They can do a lot of work against heavily armored opponents. A really useful unit. And if you look at them, they look really heavily armored as well. So the stats really reflect that. This is going to be a really good unit uh, for you. When you fight heavily armored opponents. And what do we have here? Spears. 
They can make a shield wall. They have a 5 attack, 28 defense, 11 in armor and 10 defense skill, 7 in shield. They can make a shield wall. So these guys are going to hold the line for you so incredibly long. As long as you put them in shield wall and in guard mode, they are going to be tough to break through. These units are incredibly worthwhile for you. So Spear God of the Iron Crown is going to be really nice to have as your front lines and as your cavalry killers as well. That's all of the basic unit. Now we're beginning to move up to some of the more exotic, uh, rare, powerful units. We're going to begin with this one because I think this is the one that is the least elite of these units. These are the Scourge of Gothmog. Um, they look really cool as well. Look at these units. I don't know. Are these humans or, or are these orcs? I'm not sure, but look at the design. Look at the design of these units. They look scary. And I think the stats reflect that as well. Let's take a look. 15 attack, 18 charge, 25 defense. Combat bonus in snow, deserts, fright in nearby enemy infantry, excellent morale, powerful charge. These guys are really good at going berserk mode, basically. They are just meant to be in the thick of it and meant to do a lot of damage. They are damage dealers uh, with a high attack of 15. So they are definitely going to be useful. Uh, as that. They are not as elite as these units though, I think. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Iron Drakes of Angband. Look at these guys. It looks like they are from Isengard with that white, white hand. But look at these units. They look so cool as well. Look at them. They look really cool. The designs is insanely nice in this mod, I have to say. Let's take a look at their stats. 8 attack, 3 missile attack. I'm not sure if that reflects. I think these are they use like a fire. They fire fire like the runic troops in Divine and Conk uh, in the Divine and Conquer mod, uh, the sub mod. Uh, they have like a, they fire fire and destroy everything in their path. I'm not sure that the missile attack reflects their actual actual damage outputs. Eight attack, twenty defense, two hit points. Can do sh shield drum, uh, bonus fighting cavalry. They're good against cav. That's good. They are hard to charge. This is a target that the cavalry really wants to go for, maybe. So it's good that they are effective against cav. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We can. I'm going to show you these guys off when they fire, when we do the battle later. Uh, it's going to be inter interesting to see how much damage they can do. And then we have the Bulldogs of Angband. These are really powerful. They are. And... Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think that Bulldogs are a lesser Maya that uh, show themselves as Orcs, but they are far more powerful than Orcs. I could be wrong here. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not entirely sure what, what the Bulldogs are, but I think they're lesser Maya. They're Maya or lesser Maya. Um, so they are really going to be powerful. I think that's what they are. Let's take a look at their stat. They look really cool. They look insanely elite. Look at the design here. They look elite. Stat-wise, 15 attack, 6 charge, 38 defense, 2 hit points. They are going to carve through everything they fight. They have 2 hit points with 38 defense. That's insane. These guys are going to be so incredibly nice. I mean, this unit might even be the future general's unit, perhaps, for your generals. That could definitely be the case here. Uh, if this are... If these units are your generals, then they're going to do a lot of work. I mean, Angband should have overpowered troops. Maybe not the basic Orc troops, but their elites should be insanely powerful. And we are going to come to the most powerful units soon. Um, it's going to be interesting to take a look at those. But these guys are monsters. They are going to kill everything in front of them. They're not effective against armor, though. So they, it might take a long time for them to punch through heavily armored opponents. Uh, but they're going to survive for a long time. They are. And then we are going to take a look. They have the Mangonel, uh, the Realm of Angban. And the thing with the Silmarillion Total War is the fact that they don't use a regular crew. They actually use a useful unit. So here we're getting the Iron Shod Legionnaires as the unit that are using the Mangonel. So we're getting these guys. 5 attack, 17 defense as the troops. When they're out of ammunition, they can definitely do some work on the field of battle afterwards. 
Uh, I think that is nice. They have some use after they're done with their uh, siege weapons. Let's take a look at the damage they can do. Attack versus troops, three, four against buildings. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure how this works, these stats that they're doing. But uh, I can definitely tell you that this is likely going to be able to do a lot of damage against your many enemies that you will have when you play as Angband. Because Angband has a lot of enemies. Uh, they are going to have that. And now to the most interesting to look at. Let's begin with the troll god of Gothmog standing tall and mighty here. They look mighty fine. Heavily armored trolls here. Let's take a look at their stats. 20 attack, charge bonus of 15, total defense of 28, armor 10, defense skill 10, shield 8, hit points of 7. May charge without orders, powerful charge. They're not effective against armor. Uh, they do not frighten nearby enemy infantry, but they are powerful. Um, I would kind of expect them to be more powerful than, than what they are. They have 7 hit points, remember, but uh, 28 and 20, I, I would expect a little bit more in terms of defense primarily, especially with these armor plates that they're holding here. But overall, it's going to be a glorious unit to use, of course. They're line breakers, excellent for breaking enemy lines. And to the most interesting troops. And one thing I just want to make clear. Morgoth is not in the game currently. I really hope... I'm not sure if they can implement him as a single entity unit. I do believe that they, there might be a shot. Because I think that the Silmarillion crew has an, a fix for it. Sauron is a single entity unit. And if they can make Morgoth into a single entity. That would be huge. I really want him to be a single entity totally insanely overpowered general in this mod but he is not in the game yet Morgoth is not here but let's take a look at this unit the Uruloki the fire breeding drakes uh, this is how they look uh, it's really hard to make dragons fly in medieval 2 it's not easy so they have gone with this way of implementing them uh, they're walking um, they're breeding fire, they are probably really OP. Let's take a look at their stats as well. 16 melee attack, 9 missile attack, they're breathing fire. So I'm thinking this is maybe more than that, they're likely doing a lot of damage. Charge bonus of 10, total defense of 30, uh, 12 hit points. So these guys are insane in melee as well, when they have 12 hit points, that's really huge. They are really powerful in melee when they are done with their fire breathing fire. Special attack, yeah, that's the fire. Bonus fighting cavalry, they're good against that. Excellent morale. They're not armor piercing, but they're good against cav. They are probably good against anything, except maybe armor piercing troops. Um, they have a lot of armor, so they might not be that strong against armor piercing units. And javelins, you need to look out for javelins. Armor piercing javelins and crossbows could probably take these guys down quite easily. Other than that, I think they're effective against almost everything. Really powerful troops. And last, but certainly not least, let's take a look at these units. The Valorauka, the Balrogs of Angban. Look at this one with the helmet there, looking insanely nice. This one doesn't have a helmet, he looks scary. Look at that, he looks really scary. And this guy here. He's looking on his side. Yeah, it looks scary. Let's take a look at the Valorauka. Here we go. The stats are really looking insane here. 40 attack. Charge bonus of 20. 46 in total defense. 26 in armor. 20 in defense skill. Um, hit points. 15 hit points. They have a special attack as well. I wonder what that might be. They might have some fire thingy or something. Bonus against cavalry, frightened nearby enemy infantry. They're not effect effective against armor though, but uh, killers of everything. That's what these units are. They're going to destroy everything in their path. Try and uh, not fight w in an area where you can uh, be targeted from javelins and crossbows and siege weapons. Other than that, they're going to kill everything. Armor piercing might be quite effective against them as well, but they have so 
brutal stats 15 defense uh, 15 hit points and 46 defense that's insane 40 attack glorious unit absolutely glorious okay let's take a look at the battle i'm not going to show you too much of the enemy faction because i want to save that for later they have some forces over there i'm not going to show you too much i want to show you angbon's units uh, let's unpause and let's uh, go forth for the enemy just uh, send these guys forth. I'm just going to click the UI. Go for the battle. There we go. Return. Go forth, minions of Morgoth. And uh, do as much damage as you can. The units we really want to see in action here is probably the Iron Rakes, the Uruloki, and the Valoraukar. Uh, the rest are not that important. I'm not going to show you the entire battle. I just want to show you these powerful... The Mangonel would be fun, fun to see as well. It's push it forwards but these elite troops will be fun to see uh, the fire breeding dragons and the iron drakes valorauka those kinds of troops horrors of nandan gortheb they have some scary things here you can see we're not going to take a look too much in that army let's just create a group for these units alone We need to make sure that we can actually fire as well. What do we have? A oh, something is already firing. Slow down the speed. Is is it their own troops that are firing? Could be. Was it the Balrog? I don't know. There's so many explosive things. They all died. That's what I know. <laughs> Could be friendly fire. Let's see if we can use dragons. Are you in range? No. Run forwards. Get yourself in range. Let's see if the... Mangonel can do some work. Let's see how this is going to fire. The Mangonel. Iron Rakes, move forwards. So we want to see you fire. The Mangonel is loading up. There we go. It doesn't look. It's not the Mangonel. It looks like. Uh, it's not the Mangonel in the Violent Conquer. It's not the same as the, the Goblins get in the Violent Conquer. This is a different kind of Mangonel. You can clearly see that. Uh, we did some damage to these uh, forces though, so... Here comes the Valorauka. What's the special attack? I don't know. Doesn't look like we can do the special attack. I mean... Just them on their own, they're quite special, so... Let's send them forth. Keep the Mangonel firing. Oh, look at that! Look at the damage. Okay, the Mangonel can do a lot of damage. Let's send forth the minions as well. Send them forth. Let's have a little battle. Let's go. Send everything forth. Just send them in. Send these elites and these wretches, these pathetic early tier troops. Dragon, can you fire? Go for these units here. Beast hunters. There we go. Okay, <laughs> it's, like, it's like an artillery piece. Uh, you're fine. Okay, that's a bit underwhelming. Maybe. I was expecting more. But, uh, yeah, they can definitely do some damage. What do we have here? It's big, huge spider. The Hungering Maw. Balrogs, it's time for you to go in. Send them in against some melee forces here. Let's send these guys forwards. Let's see how much damage they can do as well. How is the captain looking? Um... Let's, let's just form these guys up over there. I want to see how the uh, Angband captain looks. Trolls, go into combat. Here we go. The Valorauka are charging in. Doing massive damage. They're probably... Yeah, they're already broken. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can use these units now. Is there anything left for us to fight here? The enemy has a lot smaller army than we do. Flank around here. Oh, you're getting surrounded. You help out there. Let's take a look at the... Is this the captain? I guess it is. This li is likely the general. The guy there. Trolls support in the fight there. You're over there. Feel free to fire now. Let's see how you do when you fire. This is going to be glorious, I think. Let's take a look. The Iron Rakes of Angband. Oh, yeah. 
they're firing what I expect them to do. Only there we go. The uh, they're doing a lot of damage in there. Well, I hope that you like this video. I'm just gonna do... This is really simple. This is just a simple video. I really want to do... Um, just cover Silmarillion Total War. It's only multiplayer at this moment, so... There's nothing for me to cover except the units. But as soon as they release something about the campaign that I can look into... I'm going to show it. With their permission, of course. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed. The next video is likely going to be some of the elven factions that I show for you. Have a beautiful day. Goodbye to you all.